until I do it again. So this bed comes out of the shared directory. So insert or options, find the symbols under my name, under the blocks. It'll be this A1 furniture bed. And then I would put it right here, but it's not actually centered that way. We've got an inch left over on the other side. So you need to move it up half an inch. Then we'll move to the master walk-in closet. It's typical to show shelves in the closet as being 12 inches deep and the rod for the clothes to be 10 inches out from the wall. So the shelf is going to be on A casework. Basically it's, it's the one that says A, not A2 floor case. A1 floor case. Casework typically stands for cabinets, but we're also going to use it for the shelves in the closet. So we can use offset for that. As long as we're set to this layer first, if you say offset and make sure you type in layer and current, C for current, and then 12 inches for the offset, it should offset to that layer. Um, before we come back and fill up the shelves, which is typically the way they're shown, the rods actually go all the way to the wall. So we're going to offset this as well, but we're going to change this to floor case hidden to get a hidden line. And it's going to be an offset of two inches. So which means the rods are 10 inches out, wall to wall. And then typically it's common for the shelves to be shown as kind of a continuous plane, unless they're at a different height and the rods to be shown with a hidden line for underneath. All right, this is the master bathroom. It has a standard tub in it. A standard tub is 30 inches by 60 inches. There is a block for it. The block is not entirely set up correctly. Whoever created the block has the tub being like half an inch out from the wall. That's not correct. They actually butt the tub right up against the framing. So once you get it in, you'll have to move it against the wall. It's going to be on the plumbing layer. PLBG for plumbing. And then that's an insert. 30 inches by 60 inches, basically 2 feet 6 by 5 feet long. The standard way. That's not where we need to be. Uh, it should be plumbing tub there. All right, as you can see, it's got an edge around it there. That's not correct. That's not how they would build it. They would actually shove it up against the framing and then whatever moisture board or tile they had would be over the top of that. In the back, then we have an opening back here. So what they decided to do, even though it's not really called out, they decided to put a seat behind the tub so they're going to build a partial wall back there to, to basically have a seat in the back. So that's going to be on the partial height layer, PRHT, if I can find it. Here it is, a wall partial height. And just draw a line for that from the back of the tub to the wall. Again, I think your object snaps the ones I like best for what we're doing right now. O snap, object snaps, endpoint, midpoint, intersection, and perpendicular seem to work pretty well. All right, so basically we were creating a seat that's behind the tub. That's what it amounts to. It'd be the same height, possibly a little higher. They don't really call out what it is. All right. Now over here, we've got the countertop and the laboratory, which is a bathroom sink, 
and then the toilet itself we threw in the toilets last time but I'll go back and get it again here in a minute I wouldn't have designed it this way because I don't like cabinets next to the tub but I have seen it done on occasion and that's what they did in this plan that the length of it is arbitrary and it's four feet six the distance out is pretty common it's a 22 inch depth bathroom cap that's pretty standard so that's going to be casework offset 22 and then the end of it's butting up against so I just draw a line for that a tub here and then I would fill it that and then the length of the countertop is arbitrary it was up to the designer they decided to use 4 6 I don't like this particular condition because I think you get water next to the cabinet wood too easily there but that's the way it was designed and I have seen this done so it's not that uncommon so that's 22 inches offset yeah normal. yeah for a bathroom cabinet the depth is standard the standard is 22 inches and then we need to put the laboratory in there which will be centered on the midpoint so that's going to be on the plumbing layer and that's another insert A bathroom sink is a laboratory, L-A-B-A-T-O-R-Y, or a laboratory is a bathroom sink. That might be a better way to say it. All right, so we need to be on the midpoint here. Well, we didn't actually draw a line for the midpoint there, but we have a midpoint over here, so we can just do that. And because we know that's 22 inches deep, we can just move it over 22 inches. All right, we only need 30 inches of clearance by code from surface to surface for the toilet. And we've got more than that here, so we're just going to center it in between the two. Now, the only way we're gonna to know to do that is actually the easiest way to get the midpoint is just draw a diagonal from one line to the other and then find your midpoint. Now, from last class, you may already have the toilet in there and then you can move it in the right place. I'll go ahead and reinsert it. It's going to be view, two pallets, toilet imperial. I'm going to change that to a round plan by using this. Then I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to move the midpoint here to where this intersects. But we don't want the toilet right against the wall, so we need to move it two inches out. Between the master bedroom and the master bath, the floor material changes. So that's a finish. So FNSH for finish. And it goes right in the middle of the wall. Draw a line. And then the ceiling height always, always also drops from 11.8 to 8 feet between the master bedroom and the master bath. So there is a ceiling line there, which is on the overhead layer. Just 
show you the thought process here. You don't need to dimension this like I'm going to do. From here to there, since we're drawing true frame width walls, we have a 5-7 dimension. We need at least 30 inches in the clear, and that's surface to surface, so we've got to account for any sheetrock or any lip on the countertop. So it's better to use like 2-8. So if you take 5-7, which is the dimension currently from frame to frame, and say we probably need to provide at least two eight in the clear there, including everything. That's going to leave us with two feet 11. So there's not room enough for a three foot cabinet. If you just base it on two feet six, then you're not accounting for the sheetrock or any lip overhang on the countertop and they really count from surface to surface these days so we've got to have a two feet nine inch wide cabinet there that's why it's two feet nine it's also going to be 22 inches out it's going to be on the casework layer <laughs> And the other direction uh, was the 2-9 because we, it's not going to fit with a three-foot cabinet. Two feet nine. All right. Uh, and you may be wondering why I'm not drawing it all the way around and I did it up here. The plumbing layer is a lighter line type than the casework layer, but the blue line, which is the wall layer, is the thickest. So you don't really need to draw it back here because it's already going to be pretty thick. You need to draw it to there because this line is thicker than that line. So, you know, if the line is thicker that you're going into, you don't really need to draw it again because it's just going to be obscured by the thicker line anyway. So that's why. We also have a laboratory down here. So that's going to be on the plumbing layer. Bathroom sink, which is the laboratory. I guess you could copy it from the one above as well. LAB lab, short for laboratory. And again, since I don't have the midpoint back here, I can just put it on the midpoint here and then move it back the 22 inches. If you're wondering how I'm getting that to rotate when you insert those things, if you've got this checked, specify on screen, and you've got your ortho on, you'll be able to do it. All right, and then here we need to center. What's that? Yeah. Or was it initially placed before you I put it on the midpoint here. The other way to do it is to draw a line back here and put it on the midpoint, but it amounts to the same thing. I'm just putting it in where I already know where the midpoint is and moving it over 22 inches because this is a 22 inch deep cabinet. Right. So it's the same ratio. I'm, I'm saying it in terms of depth. So like where did the, uh, the faucet part of the block start before you started moving it back? All right, I'll reinsert it. So. When you insert that, if you've got a known line, which we do, the front of the, I've got to specify on screen here. I put it on the midpoint here because it's a known location and we know it's 22 inches deep. So when I rotate that, I just move it back 22 inches. It's going to end up in the same place had I have gone through the treble of drawing a line here, which you could do from the midpoint back through there through the wall. That's the other way to do it and insert that then. On that point back here, it ends up in exactly the same place because it's the same ratio. So it's, it's three inches off the back wall? Well, I don't know how far it is because it's based on just where that location is right there because it's 
that's the hot point on the block. So I took it off the, this line is coming off the midpoint. Either way, I mean, I did I it one. Did, I didn't mention it's three inches long. All right, so you can get yourself into trouble doing that though. Insert, it could be three inches. But this is the other way to do it. Coming off that midpoint, then you would put it on that intersection right there. Uh, and you're saying it's three inches. It very well may be. I never have measured it. Because there's really no need. Well, I'm getting five inches unless you're coming from, I'm coming from there. The back, yeah. yeah, okay. So either in, either way, it's based on the midpoint, whether you draw that line there or not. And then the toilet, of course, is just draw another diagonal here, find the midpoint, draw a line back. And then this time I would just copy this, take the midpoint to the perpendicular here. And that will get it in the right location. There's also a ceiling height change out here. So that's the overhead layer. <coughs> and there's a finish change between wood and the concrete here. So that's FNSH. brings us to the kitchen. Kitchen sink typically needs a 36 inch wide cabinet. That's even with a double sink. So sink is usually a little bit smaller, but the cabinet's at least 36 inches wide. Dishwasher's typically 24 inches wide. The range is typically 30 inches wide. Refrigerators are typically 36 inches, but they need vent space around them. So usually 39 inches is allowed. That's kind of the common uh, dimensions as far as width goes. In the kitchen, instead of a 22 inch deep cabinet, we have a 24 inch deep cabinet. That's the standard. Uh, and then the upper cabinets are 12 inches out. In this particular case, the cabinet ends at the end of the wall there and it's 24 inches out. So we'll just put that in first and then it's 11 feet from one side to the other before they get to the bar top. So, we'll put that in first. It's going to be on the casework. We're going to offset 24 inches. And that's here. And there. And it starts out here at the end of the wall. It wraps around here. And then we also have 11 feet to the opposite side. So, offset not 111, but 11 feet from the wall to the other cabinet. And then we're going to have two feet back in. So offset two feet, 24 inches. It actually turns there. This actually goes to the wall. And this is lined up in the same location as that. But since we offset it directly, it should already be lined up. Then we'll also have the other side of the cabinet here. Again, the blue line is going to be thicker than the cyan line. So you could draw it all the way across if you want to. It won't hurt anything, but you don't really need it. Okay. And then we have a bar top back here. 
which is 15 and a half inches which is a little bit higher than the rest of the countertops and it goes the same length and I'm going to change this to hidden case hidden and this three and a half inches, the three and a half inches is the three and a half inch frame wall that's underneath the bar top. Three and a half. And then we have 12 inch ever cabinets that don't go all the way across there, so we'll have to trim it back. The 12 inches for that coming out from this wall. It stops at the bar top right here, so you would trim that back. All right. So working our way around, we have a range behind this wall here. The range is on the appliance layer, a PPL. And I am going to draw a line so I know where to put it. It's just based on the midpoint of that wall. It's going to be an insert. Typically, 30 inch space for it. This range is actually slightly less than that width, which is you would need it to be slightly wet. So the plugs go against the wall, that's the circles with the lines. Alright, so what actually happens here is that we've got this, but we usually have a 2 foot 6 space, so it's 1 3 and 1 3 to both sides, and then the cabinet, it's, it's a slide in range which sits on the floor, so the cabinet doesn't go through the range, they stop on both sides. So if we offset 15 inches in both directions. That'll give us the edge of the cabinets. And a useful little tool called Match is here. Match Properties. So if you hit that, choose what you want to match to. You can match the lines to it. And then we want to trim that out. Trim this back and then trim the line out there. Alright. Still may need to fill it a bit. Because the range sits on the floor and slides in between the cabinets. In addition to that, there is a chimney vent hood above, one of those big metal hoods that sits above this. And it is, I don't remember, I'll have to look. Two feet nine by one feet eight. Okay, so two feet nine, half of that's one foot four and a half, and it's going to be on case hidden offset. And then one eight out from the wall. Just twenty. It's two feet nine overall, so it's one four and a half in both directions from the midline there. So this is for the vent. It's one of those metal metal chimney hoods. So that ends up being 2-9 by 1-8, one 1-8 eight. One eight from the wall, and then the 2-9 centered. On the other side of this wall, there is that wood-burning stove. And 
it's going to be centered in the space and we've got this dimension on there. I'm not sure if I had laid this out originally, I would have put this on this layer, but that's what layer they decided to put it on, which was the casework layer for the outline. It looks like a cabinet, but it's actually just the floor line that the stove is sitting on for a difference in the floor material. But we'll leave it like they've got it. I might have put it on finish instead of casework, but they've got it on casework, so that's what we'll do. All right, so this is going to be two feet two, the width of the wall there, which you can just type in PER for perpendicular and then come back. It should be lining up. And then the actual stove is on plumbing. So it's basically a uh, room heating stove, not a cooking stove. And of course, I think it's under equipment somewhere. I lost it. Wood stove. I would put that at the midpoint. And there's also a vent that they're using behind it. Ranges typically require vents. And it's going to be a three inch circle. So I just drew a line from the midpoint. I'm going to create a three inch circle. All right. In the kitchen itself, we've got the kitchen sink and the dishwasher. The kitchen sink cabinet is always 36 inches. The dishwasher is 24 inches. So that's five feet. We had 11 feet minus two feet on both sides is seven feet, which leaves us two feet. So it's best just to put one foot cabinet on one side, one foot cabinet on the other side, and then go from there. So as to put this in, we'll just draw some construction lines from this point a foot over it's just going to be a one foot cabinet we'll erase these lines in a minute so one feet over and then for the dishwasher you have a two foot space and then for the sink you have a 36 inch cabinet the sinks probably centered so I'm going to use 18 and 18 18 and 18 36 which should leave us with 12 inches, which it does. All right, so those are just construction lines to know where things go. How much was the first box set? 12 inches, because we need three feet for the sink, two feet for the dishwasher, and we have seven feet, and that's five feet, so that leaves two feet, foot on both sides for cabinets. All right, so dishwasher is going to be an appliance. What am I looking for here? I lost it. There it is. Nope. Hit the wrong thing. All right. So, dishwasher is. Yeah, it's one feet, two feet, eighteen inches, and two feet again. Yeah, one feet, two feet for the dishwasher. Both these lines represent the kitchen cabinet. This is just the midpoint. Eighteen and eighteen for thirty-six inches wide, and then twelve inches. This is just to get the middle of the kitchen sink here. All right, so the dishwasher belongs where that two feet is. All right, this is set up to where everything's completely underneath the cabinet. We both know that that's not gonna work that way. The door's always in front of the countertop, so we're gonna move it out like that where it's just I missed it where the this line is supposed to be right there on top of the cabinet line so the second line we're going to move out like that and then we're going to come back you know on the plumbing layer put in the kitchen sink
plumbing sink. It's the kitchen sink. This is why I put in the 18 inches so I know where that midpoint was. All right. Now, now that we've got those in, we don't need this other stuff anymore. That was just helping us locate where things went. I put it on plumbing. On plumbing and also the vent? Yes. Okay. All right, and then there's some more stuff that's happening in the kitchen. Over here, we've got our standard two feet base cabinet, our 12 inch uppers, and we also have the refrigerator, which does not have any base cabinets below. We've got a 6 8 dimension, which leaves us six feet in the clear, because three and a half plus half an inch would be four inches. So 6 8 minus four minus four is six feet. Refrigerator requires three feet three, so that's going to leave us two feet nine for the cabinet. All right, so casework. Offset, two feet nine. From this side. And then it's a kitchen cabinet, so it's 24 inches deep. It doesn't run through the refrigerator, so we'll fill it that. And then up above, we do have upper cabinets. So that's going to be on the case hidden. And it's going to be 12 inches since it's an upper cabinet. All right. And then we'll take the refrigerator and recenter it two inches out. But it's going to be on the appliance layer. You can put it here, but you need to move it two inches down to center it, and then two inches out to get it off the wall, because they do have to be bended around them. What's the length of that counter? Two nine, this way, yeah. two feet nine. And the hidden line? Twelve inches. So the upper cabinet says 12 inches from the wall. All kitchen cabinets are 24 inches deep. Base cabinets, 24 inches deep. This is a coat closet, so it's just a typical 12 inch shelf, and then the two inches back for the rod. So it's the casework layer. Is that 12 inches? For the shelf, yes. Yeah, that's typical for shelves and closets. It'd be 12 inches out, and then the rod is two inches back. 10 inches out from the wall. Come on. Back in the dining 
toward the back of the house there, we have a table. The easiest way to locate that is just to draw a diagonal from the bar top across to the other side of the room. It's going to be on the furniture layer. So a line from here to there. Then we'll insert it and move it into place. Dining table. All right, it's going to come in, in this direction, which is not right. So, what you can do is you can put it in, then rotate it. Draw a line on the table itself from one end to the other, diagonal line, and then take that midpoint and put it on the other top top of the midpoint on the other line. So in other words, take this now, take that midpoint, put it on top of this midpoint, and then we've got it centered in the room. So basically a diagonal for the room and a diagonal for the table, and then put them on the midpoint of the larger line there. If you haven't drawn the columns in, now will be a good time to do it there. Six inches by six inches, like rough sawn lumber, true size. And then they're going to be four six out. So it's from this to there is four six out. They line up with the edge of the walls here. Once you've got those in, there's this is a covered patio, so there's a concrete edge out there. So that's going to be on the level layer, L-E-V-L. This you would just draw a line from basically from the frame to the columns and around. We also have the edge line of the house here on the same layer. And sometimes they recess the sliding glass doors. They don't always do that. But sometimes they will. So you'll need a line on the inside edge as well. Same thing is going to occur over here at this door. And in front of the garage doors. at the front door. And we also have a threshold line, which is a level change here from the garage to the house. So it's going to be an inch and a half out width of the door. And returns back. So that's an inch and a half out there. This is the utility room. The ceiling's lower in there, so there's a ceiling line change. So that's the overhead layer. <clears throat> there's also a ceiling change between the uh, utility and the garage. So this is where the washer and the room where the washer and dryer are. We have from the frame wall to the frame wall here, seven, eight and a half. So in reality, you take in half an inch out on both sides, you have seven, seven and a half clear.
you need at least five feet for the washer and dryer and that's a very minimal washer and dryer standardly are about 30 inches about 30 inches so if you only allow five feet it's very very tight but let's say we've got five feet that leaves us two seven and a half. Well, two seven and a half is not a standard cabinet increment. So if we use two six, then that leaves us five one and a half for the washer dryer. Still tied, but it'll work. Preferable to have like five four for the washer and dryer just because it's easier to get in and out, but you can make it work with five one and a half. All right, so we're gonna have a two six cabinet because it's gotta be less than that number and a three inch increment. So it's the same as the kitchen cabinet, it's going to be 24 inches out from the wall, that's going to be on the casework layer. And it's got to be 2.6 according to what we just talked about. Didn't get the right, 2.6. Go. I'll fill it that together. We also have upper cabinets there, but there, this window is a pretty high window, so the cabinets can't go over the top of the window, so it's got to be back to this side. And what we know we have there, just by measuring it, one ten and a quarter minus half an inch, so that's going to give us one nine and something. So you can get by with one nine, but it's very tight. So offset, so let's change this to hidden. Wrong, I swear where I need to be. There we go. One foot nine. Didn't take it. One, three, nine. Let's try again. Offset. One, three, nine. There we go. In the other direction, it's the typical 12 inches out. Then you're going to fill up those together for the upper cabinet. And we do have the upper cabinet on the other side as well, so we can mirror that off the midpoint of the window. And now we can put in our washer and dryer, which is going to be an appliance. I can find it. There it is. This one you don't need to move it. You need to put it on this intersection here at the wall. And that will do. Okay, for stairs, typically they're drawn to where you draw them, where you see them, to the where they're about four feet above, although, quite honestly, most architects will just draw it wherever it seems to make more sense. They don't necessarily try to put the brake line necessarily right at four feet. They just put the brake line wherever it's convenient most of the time. But it just represents the change from, from going lower to higher on the stairs, so you're actually under the stair at some point. So it changes to a hidden line. That block already exists. It does belong on a stairs. There's also two layers for the stairs, but it actually goes on the one that just says stairs. Um, this one, there's a stairs hidden that's in there for the block, but this is the one it actually needs to be inserted on. So insert and stair level one here at the very bottom. And it's going to go on the intersection at the back side of that closet. So right here. We 
we do have a tire pump in the garage which is going to be on the level layer LEVL typically they're 18 feet back and let me scale off this drawing to make sure I'm coming from the right wall from the front frame wall so of the garage so offset 18 feet It's from here oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. to there. And then I would extend that line across. They don't necessarily have to be 18 feet, but 18 feet is pretty common. All right, and then in this particular plan, they decided to accommodate this door slightly by putting a 45 degree angle that's three feet horizontally and three feet vertically up. So there's a couple of ways you go about approaching that. Uh, but basically it's three feet out from this wall. And then three feet over this way. And as long as both sides are equal distance, it should be a 45. I'm going to trim it back here. So if both sides are equal, and let's see if they are. Three feet there. I'm just using list to double check. Three feet there. So if both sides, and it's a 90 degree angle, and both sides are equal, this should be a 45 when you draw a point to point there. Forty-five degrees. Yep. Those three feet from the inside wall. Yeah, from the inside wall. There are other ways to do that, like using camphor or chamfer. Not sure how it's pronounced. That's up here with this. If you've got a length of line here, I'll just do it out here to the side. And you've got another length of line here, and you know that the distance is going to be three feet, you can actually use that chamfer command and set the distance to being three feet for both of them. And then as long as you're far enough back, it'll create that line for you. So you could do it either way. And again, if you haven't put the columns in, now would be the time to do it. These columns are eight feet three out from the frame. They're still six inches by six inches. They do line up with the edge of the framing. And you will also need to put the concrete edge out there as well. So we need to put the beams in. The beams typically align with the edge of the frame. This is one of those things that sometimes architects draw just a little bit graphically differently to be able to show both lines that are there. So it's showing the beam on the plan, but it's showing it being set back from the edge of the frame. In reality, it's likely lining up with the edge of the frame. But if that line was directly on the same line as the concrete line, it would disappear so you wouldn't see it. So as a graphic convention to try to make things more clear, sometimes architects will move things back just slightly to be able to indicate it better, and that's how the beams are shown here. It's gonna be on overhead layer, 
And you're going to be another insert. It's very common to do this. All right, so porch and patio beams. The insert for that is going to be where the frame wall intersects here, right there. So the yellow lines are representing the beam up above because there's no wall there. It's there to hold up the porch roof. So in reality, this is likely over here on top of the red line. But when you have two lines on top of each other and one's a continuous line, the hidden line disappears and you can't see it. So as a way to be a little more clear, we've moved the beam over just slightly. And that's pretty common in architectural drawings for that to happen. Anyway, so that gets you all the beams here at the front porch and also at the back. Anyway, the inner, the, uh, you need to put it right there. That's, this block comes in, you need to put it on that point to where the frame wall intersects there in the front. What layer is that on? Overhead. A one floor overhead. Now. So we have some additional ceiling lines in here. Some of them are indicating the edge of the second floor line and some of them are indicating where the gable is up above where the ceiling connects. Uh, so actually that ceiling line there that's in this area is all the way up at the second floor gable there. But the second floor itself is kind of in this area. So if you've done the second floor and you layered it properly over the first floor, what you can do is go to your layer properties temporarily here and look for your, you may not have this in there yet though, because that may on the B on the parking lot. I don't think we've drawn those yet. So let's hold off on that and we'll come back and locate those in a minute. Let's, uh, it's seven o'clock, I tell you what, let's take a 15 minute break and then we'll continue. So be back at 7.15. Since we're going to park the second floor anyway. All right. So you got 15 minutes.